everybody, we're back. So I got everything ready uh, for the marshmallows, but it's time to hollow out our eggs so that the shell can then finish drying the rest of the way before we decorate them. And I probably, I might not decorate those tonight, but I might, I'll check and see how dry they are. And if they're dry enough, then I'll go ahead and finish putting them together um, this evening. Um, but I really think I need to wait in, on those until tomorrow because I want to make sure they're absolutely dry. Because if they're not dry, it's just, they will crumble and <laughs> it won't be worth all the effort that we have put into it. So let's do that first. So I'm going to do the yellow one first. I can stop off of this. <laughs> Our marshmallows call for cold water for um, the gelatin balloon, so I have that in the refrigerator. So let's do let's do the top first. So I'm just gently going to pick that up like that, and I'm going to start to hollow this out and get the sugar back into this bowl here. And we're just going to work very, very gently. And we're going to leave about, I'd say, a quarter of an inch. So about a quarter of an inch on the side of our egg. Because we don't want to hollow it out too thin because then it will be too fragile to work with. And it won't stand up for years of enjoyment. So, just gently going to work around the sides. So, in case y'all don't know, <laughs> I research stuff before I try them because I don't want to, um, you know, go to a lot of effort for something like this and not really know what I'm getting myself into. But this is the first time I've actually made these. But I've, I've looked at them. Uh, Martha Stewart does a version too that's really pretty. And I wish I could do like Martha Stewart talent. Okay. Now I'm going to take this, see, just like that. And I'll set it down here. I'll throw this back in there. It's kind of hard, so I'm not going to put it back in there. But that's uh, more sugar that we might be able to use again. I'll put this in the sink because it's hard to okay. Maybe I can move this to the side so you can get a better idea of what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm going to set it down gently and take a picture. So you get an idea about how much I took out of the center of it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over because now I want to do the window because this is the top. I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit. And I'm going to use this really sharp knife without the cover on it. And I'm just going to gently go around this guy here, I hope. Just gently go around this guy here. I think I am anyway. Little by little by little. Work it out. And I might even try to do a little more from the inside because the inside is actually softer than the outside.
quickly because I don't want to crack the egg. These are panorama eggs. Alright. So that came out. That's hard, so I'm not going to keep that hard either. So just like that. I'm going to work from the inside. It's a little prettier. I like that. So it looks a little rough now, and that's okay because tomorrow or tonight, depending on how quickly these dry. Um, I'm going to put an edge on that so you won't see how rough it is. So I'll take a little picture right quick. And I'm going to turn it over so the wet side is out. I'm going to get my other piece and I'm going to carefully work on it. So, so gently, just from the edge. About a quarter of an inch from the edge. Just work around it gently, gently, gently. So you don't tear it up. It's kind of like you're working on a real egg and you'll be real careful. Just going to hollow that out ever so lightly. Looked like the bottom there wasn't quite dry, so I'm just going to build it up a little bit, like so. Push it back down. But you're not going to be able to see it. You're not going to be able to see it anyway. I don't even know why I'm worried about it. But yeah, you know, I'm about to take some pictures, so I want to look pretty for the pictures. All right. So now I'm going to set it. Set it down wet side up. And this is where our, the bulk of our decorations will go, is in the bottom of this and in the back. So I'll turn it around. I'll take a picture. Move 
with this back over there too. Well, this has been nice. I, I really enjoyed this little product. So uh, let me put the cover back on this one. So I can actually use this again if I want to make another one. I decide to make another one. I might. Getting our purple over here. And this one actually has a bigger window in it. Because I'm actually using that egg up and down instead of side to side. So you don't have to pick it up to look in it. See how bright they're getting now that they're drying? Take these little pieces that I cut off to make them flat on the bottom. Bring the top part first. Let's see if I can. I didn't have to do what I did with the last one. Get a different spoon. I don't want that yellow on my face. Gently, gently work your way around the edge. Little by little by little. Scrape that right back into the bowl. And I actually could make some smaller ones too. I think I have a smaller egg mold somewhere. Who knows where? I'll try to keep all my crafts together and sometimes that just doesn't happen. Same thing with this one we did with the last one. Just work around the edge a little by a little. Okay, well, I'll break it so that I thin it out. I think this design, oh, there it goes. It's more fragile than the other one. Yep, it's just falling apart. Yep, it's just falling apart. Alright, so I wonder if we can glue it back together. With some wet, with some wet stuff. <laughs>
and find out. This is how you learn how to do stuff. Just try it. Find out if it works. Some of my other eggs, just egg molds, just fell on the floor. <laughs> Oopsie. Alright. So I'm going to try to fix it like this by pressing some wet sugar into these cracked parts. I mean, you just never know until you try it. So we're going to find out if my idea works. doing now is I'm just pressing some of the uh, wet sugar into these crack parts. See if it'll hold together. We'll find out. And maybe, um, maybe not. And then never know to get done. I'm just gluing it back together with this wet, this wet um, sugar, and we will see. I might be able to cover up the cracks with this frosting or icing and decoration. We'll find out. We shall see. Basically just um, pressing some of the wet sugar into the cracks. Still trying to shape the opening of the egg so we still get a panoramic view. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But hey, at least we try. Pushing this all back up into the egg. Just like so. I'll take a picture of my repair. 
Let's we'll see if it works. I'm just going to let it dry like this for a while. See what happens. What's it going to hurt just to try? And if it just falls apart, it falls apart. I don't know. We'll find out. There, I'll let it dry. Alright, so on to this part. Hopefully this part doesn't fall apart. And if it does, well, I guess it just does. And we'll just have a yellow egg to, to work with. So just little by little by little. And I think maybe next time um, I'll work on those, those ones with the opening in the front earlier. Maybe I'll go an hour and a half on those instead of two. And then the, the front will be easier to open without damaging the egg. And all of our hard work, and my hard work, but hopefully you can learn from my mistake. Okay, y'all said leave the bloopers in. So I left the bloopers in. <laughs> sugar over here. And I'll leave, oops, I'm going to take a picture. I got sugar over here. There, out of the way. Maybe I'll do this. So I'm not taking up so much space over here. Alright. Right, so let's put the top back on this so it doesn't dry out. I might need to make another purple egg. <laughs> and I might just go ahead and do that just as a preventative measure so we have one tomorrow. In case that one, that doesn't look like it's going to work. But, you know, never know until you try. So, I'm going to put these over here. So they're out of my way. Flowers are drying pretty. Clean up this mess. Right quick, and we can start um, our marshmallow process. Okay, so with the um, sugar cleaned up, with the marshmallows, um, I'm gonna do chocolate covered marshmallows um, for part of my project. This is something I want to do. So what I, I'm going to do that part first. I still have, I still have sugar all over the counter. All right. So I'll put this back here. All right. So let's do. I already polished the molds, even though they're silicone. So you know we got we got to paint the chocolate on. So let's paint the chocolate on. Then we'll put them in the freezer. And I'm going to put them in the freezer while um, I make the marshmallow, the marshmallow part, and um, we'll heavily oil the um, bunny silicone molds so that they'll pop out to do our our peeps. So, um, but what we'll need for the marshmallows, and I'm making caramel caramel flavored marshmallows. So what I'm using is I'm using uh, caramel flavored syrup 
like you put in your coffee, and this is Orchard Park Gourmet Caramel Flavored Syrup and um, corn, corn syrup. So instead of a full cup of light corn syrup, I'm using a quarter cup of the caramel flavored syrup and three quarters of a cup of the light corn syrup. And okay, so we'll need um, three envelopes of unflavored gelatin, Knox gelatin is what I'm using. Not jello, but gelatin. And not sure gel. Gelatin. Um, we need a half a cup of water, a half a cup of cold water, which I still have in the refrigerator. I use filtered water um, and it's cold. So I, it's still in the refrigerator because it needs to be cold when we start this. Um, a cup and a half of granulated white sugar. A quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, um, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, and I use my um, homemade extract. And then, if we were just doing, if we were doing regular marshmallows, we would need half cornstarch and half powdered sugar, equal amounts, to uh, put in our pan. If we were going to put it in a pan, and we would spray the pan, spray the pan with vegetable oil spray first and then we would lightly flour that with the um, corn with the corn starch and the powdered sugar mixture and then we, we would pour our marshmallows into that pan and even them out really really well and then we would top them with that mixture as well but today we're gonna pipe marshmallows. So we're going to pipe some marshmallows into this. We're going to put it back in the refrigerator or freezer. I'm going to put it back into the freezer. I'm going to let it sit while I do those. Then I'm going to bring it back out and I'm going to close it up with chocolate. And then I'm going to put it back in the freezer for a while. And then um, I'll pop them out of the mold. And um, I'll take pictures of them. But I'll, I'll come back when I get ready to do all that part. But the first thing we need to do is we need to. Uh, um, one thing I would suggest is that you have um, a candy thermometer, and this is what a candy thermometer looks like. And it tells you the different stages and the different temperatures that your mixture is or your candy is has cooked to. And you want to cook these to 240 degrees, which is the softball stage. Um, a lot of things, if you don't cook them to the right temperature, like um, hard crack, um, your candy, like say peanut brittle or something like that, if you didn't cook it to that hard crack stage, then your peanut brittle wouldn't be brittle, for instance. And your softball stage, it's usually for candies like uh, the marshmallows and uh, caramels and that sort of thing. Uh, but you, that's something you really need to be accurate about. Four bucks at Walmart. So it's definitely worth the investment. Um, you know, just as well as um, an instant re thermometer. Those are great for like fish and um, ground, ground beef and eggs and that sort of thing. Um, you really need to have these two things in the house. And they're very inexpensive. I mean, your health is definitely worth it. Not to mention having your products turn out well for you so you don't waste all that money on the, pro on the stuff that you use to make your recipe, only to have it fail because you didn't spend five bucks on a candy thermometer. So we'll do, we'll do that part next. So first we gotta do, we gotta paint the chocolate and then see the molds. So you guys have seen me do this already. So we did we did this for uh, the Christmas candy. I'm just gonna put a little bit in each one. 
Now I'll paint them up the sides. And I'll throw them in the freezer. And that's where they'll stay. I don't know, I put them like maybe a quarter of a teaspoon here, half a teaspoon maybe. It's not much. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna spread it out with my paintbrush here up the side so we have a shell for the um, marshmallows. And I'm just gonna put um, some caramel in, in here, you know, like do the shell and then do some caramel. But then I thought, no, let's just make caramel marshmallows. It'd be a lot faster. We're basically just gonna paint this up the side. Just like we did with uh, the other one. So it's gonna take a little more chocolate than that, I think. Let's find out. Oops. <laughs> no, I'm here, I'm making a mess again. Alright. So we have this chocolate shell, basically, is what we're making. over here so I can see what I'm doing. And make sure you can't see any of any of the the mold. Let's move on to the next one. say it's going to take about a tablespoon for these molds because of the size they are. Just like I did for the candy that we made at Christmas and the um, chocolate bombs. Just like for those. And I'm thinking we want we want this shell to be kind of thick because the marshmallow is going to be warm when we put it in here, which is why we want to put it back in the refrigerator, back in the freezer, so that um, hopefully it doesn't melt our shell. I mean, I don't even know if I'm supposed to be doing this. <laughs> this is another thing. I'm going to try it. See how it works, and if it doesn't work, well then we'll do something different the next time. Maybe next time we'll dip, we'll dip the marshmallows in chocolate. But today, we're going to make shells. Because that's just how, what I want to try. I mean, how else do people figure out how to do things if they don't just like go, oh, I wonder how that would work. And then try. You know that's why we have a video camera, right? You know that's why we have phones that like fit in your hand because somebody went, hmm, I wonder. I wonder. I actually, um, cell phones actually started out as a um, multi-level marketing plan. Um, I believe it was AT&T. Those big phones you see like in a, a night at the Roxbury. Those big bulky things. Yep, so he was sitting at the dining room table trying to talk my friend into joining his team and selling this new product. A cellular telephone that you could use anywhere. And they asked me if I thought it was a good idea. I was like, yeah, I sure do. And if I could afford to get in on it, I would get in on it. And I could not afford to get in on it, but I tell you what, if I could have afforded to get on it, <laughs> I would not be working right now. Because, yeah, because now everybody has a cell phone. I don't know if they got in on it or not, but I sure hope they did. They were just, um, they were my fiance's cousin. I was just staying with them temporarily. I just happened to be there at the time when their friend came over. 
Sure we went anyway, that's for sure. Yeah, Amway's got some good laundry products, let me tell you that. I don't know anybody who sells it or I could use it. Got a white sock recipe that'll turn kids' baseball pants that are orange from clay or black from dirt from playing baseball. I'll turn them white as snow again. Like brand new. So I used to my kids were playing. I walk around the house in my socks all the time. I could use that white sock recipe. <laughs> Anybody knows what it is, let me know. You can leave that in the comments. You know somebody who sells animal products. We used to have a product called Zoom that would take uh, permanent marker off the final sign if your kids did something silly and decided to write their name on the side of your house and permanent marker, they would take it off. And something else. I don't remember what it was called, but um, it's like an all-purpose cleaner. Who trick right? Take crayon off the walls. You take the fan off. Take the crayon off the. Some good products. I don't know the person who used to sell it anymore, so that's why I don't do it anymore. I don't, I don't live here anymore. They moved away. They were in the military. And that was long before they were online. I think they're online now. I think uh, many, 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 many years ago when Fuller Brush was door to door, I think my granny was a Fuller, Fuller Brush man. <laughs> I think my granny actually sold Fuller Brushes. Flowers, cool. I think I've covered everything. I'm in the mess of that tray. <laughs> when don't I make a mess though, right? <laughs> I can see you rolling your eyes and go, when don't you make a mess? Go ahead and put those in the freezer. And then up the three. Try to make some room in there earlier. These are the four girl bunnies. So the marshmallows we're going to make today are piping marshmallows. I'm going to put them in a piping bag and I'm going to pipe them into these molds. So we don't mix them as long as we would like for regular marshmallows. for six minutes. I think if you're doing like regular marshmallows, probably do like eight. Eight to ten. And just paint this chocolate into these molds. It doesn't matter what kind of paint brush you use. Natural hair is what I would suggest. Natural fibers, that's what I use. They last a lot longer than the synthetic brushes do.
This would have been cute, just as candy. Just pour chocolate on them, make candy on them. I think what they actually are is ice trays. <laughs> but I'm using them to make candy. Because I can. There's a lot of things that you can use um, to make uh, candy in. I actually got some square, um, little tiny storage boxes, some little storage bowls. They're square. And what, what you do is you take and you freeze, freeze water in them. And you put a toothpick or a popsicle stick in the center. And then after they're frozen, you take them out of the ice, out of the little storage containers. And you can do this with square ice cube trays too. A little silicone ice cube tray. But you need to put the, the toothpick or the um, popsicle stick in them. Because you, you need that little handle. But then you'll take those and then you'll dip them in chocolate. Then you'll set them on a tray. Wait for the ice to melt. When the ice melts, you just pour that out. And now you have a chocolate shell that you can make a cheesecake in. Or a little dessert. A little fancy dessert. Have a little party you want to brush your friend. There you go. Maybe I'll do a video on that. So you have a chocolate shell, cheesecake in it, just strawberry cheesecake, or just use strawberries to decorate it. Check that out, that one, put it in this one. This candy making stuff it's kind of tedious but it's worth it it's so worth it i mean even if you're just making it for yourself you're worth it go ahead make yourself something fun make yourself something interesting make them for yourself and then when we can when we can all go to each other's houses again and you'll have something fun to take with you so while well, we couldn't visit each other during the pandemic i learned how to do this Then you have yummies, something yummy to take with you. Maybe somebody's birthday's coming up. You can find a fun, a fun mold to turn into a candy. It's always nice to show up at somebody's house with something you made taste good in hand. Put some of this out here and I'll put it over there. Put back in here. Oops, I missed the spot. Oops, missed the spot. Missed a couple spots apparently. like much until you turn them out. When you turn them out they look really cute. Now I'll put this in the frame. Now I will do this one. Got eight little candy trays in it. This this one's actually a, a candy tray. Yeah, this one's actually a candy one. But you could use it as an ice cube tray if you wanted to. It's your house, you do what you want. Be cooking for children, especially young children. Find all kind of fun stuff to do for them. 
You could even find like at Christmas time, uh, if you celebrate Christmas, you could do this at Christmas time too. Just do uh, Christmas decorations. You make all kind of fun stuff out there. Just about every holiday you can think of, somebody makes a mold or a candy mold or a cookie mold or something for it. If you're the kind of person who likes to do that kind of stuff, and I do. If you get really good at it, you can probably sell it. Just check, check with your local cottage laws and see what kind of stuff you're allowed to sell. I can't sell um, moist spreads like banana bread or um, zucchini bread, but I can sell my cakes. I can sell cookies. I don't think I can sell my extracts because they have alcohol in them. I think I'd have to have a, a liquor license for that. That's why I just give them away. I hope when I give stuff like that, it inspires people to, to learn how to do that kind of stuff. Because a lot of times, <clears throat> the reaction is, Oh my gosh, I didn't know you could do stuff like that at home. I've been spending all this money. Mm -hmm. I know, me too. Me too. That little thin on the bottom. Me too. I learned how to do this stuff. Most of my projects start with, I wonder if I could, and then off I go. Uh, that's why I like the internet. You can find just about anything you want to learn how to do on the internet. Especially if, you, if you're a seeker of knowledge, and I am. I love to learn new things. I hope that's why you'll you'll like and subscribe and share and comment on my channel. Be nice. <laughs> because you like to learn new things too. You're about to learn how to make marshmallows. And yes, this I've already made marshmallows because I wanted to see how hard it was. And when I found out how easy it was, I thought, you know what, I need to do a video on this. So other people know how to do it, because it's really easy. Then they need to dry for uh, at least four hours. Um, better overnight, especially if we're going to cut them. And I wondered, I wondered to the Marshmallow Madness group, how come you guys don't cut them, cut them around? Like you get the, get at the store and they're like, well, duh, so you know they're homemade. So, okay. so yeah, I asked a really stupid question. <laughs> it's like, yeah, why didn't that dawn on me? That, yeah, okay, so we don't cut them like the store bought because we want people to know that they're not. I put a little too much chocolate in a couple of these. These are smaller than the other ones. Not that you could ever have too much chocolate. <laughs> but, we're going to set that to the side. Take another picture of the messy, messy mess I made. And now we're going to put these in the freezer. I'm going to set these crossways on my other bolts. Alright. Half of that stuff that's in my freezer are uh, future projects. Puff pastry, um, pilo leaves, pilo leaves, is that how you say it? Pilo leaves, pilo leaves. I need, a, I need a new towel. That one's really dirty. Alright. So. 
process done that quickly. Okay, so now what do we need to do? Now we need to make some marshmallows. We'll move all the stuff over here. So the only thing about marshmallows that I say is follow the directions. Okay? Once you get from the stove to this part, it's just pretty much waiting. So one of the things we need to do is we need to move this stuff out of the way. <laughs> After I brought it all over here. Sorry. We need to spray this heavily with oil. We're not going to uh, prepare this like we're going to cut them because we're, we're going to pipe these. We need to get everything out that we're going to need because once the marshmallows, once the marshmallows are ready to ready, once the marshmallows are ready. We gotta work fast because they will set up really quick. So, yeah, that's the same one I had three hours ago. <laughs> that's the same trick I had three hours ago. So, we're gonna spray this heavily. And spray so they don't stick. They didn't say how much is too much, so we're just gonna go with that. Just move these back out of the way. So, so I wipe this up right quick. So I can get my pastry bag. So this one, um, I'm gonna use the, the um, 16 inch bags. The ones I had before were only 12. Uh, I couldn't find 18 inch bags. And I've never used, I've never used reusable bags before. This never did. They're hard to clean. And I guess what I could do is I could, um, and one way you could you could figure out where you need to cut is you could hold the tip up to it. And I wouldn't cut any any less than halfway up the tip. So that it sits down under slug. So we're gonna need this. marshmallows into our molds and I'll do the chocolate ones first. I'll get them out and I'll do the chocolate ones first. And of course we need uh, something to home our bag. Now, this is from this is for my work. We got this last year I went to um, our manager's recruit at um, Cherokee. Cherokee Resort, I think that's what it's called. I'm gonna cut this a little more, so I'm trying to trying to back this up. Uh, put it in now on the back of that because I want to cut it a little bit more. I got it a little shorter than I told you guys to do. Marshmallow doesn't run out. 
Bonk on the back. Do the same thing with uh, macarons too. Uh, yeah, okay, so if I can get this open, that's what we'll do. <laughs> Experience that marshmallows are super sticky. So it would not to do get a couple of uh, I'm gonna do a spoon I think. And it needs to be it needs to be oiled too. of granulated sugar. We need one cup of light corn syrup and I substituted uh, one quarter cup of that with the caramel flavored uh, syrup. Syrup, syrup, however you like to say it. A quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt. One tablespoon of vanilla extract. And uh, we don't need to know the rest of it because uh, we're not doing, we're not going to be dusting them. We're actually going to um, take them out of the mold and then we're going to put them in sanding sugar to make them. Oops. So I'm going to get my cold water out. Because this is, this is for the gelatin. Okay. So I'm just going to run through the instructions right quick. So you understand everything that we're going to be doing. So it says, in the bowl of your stand mixer, combine the cold water and the gelatin. Then prepare your silicone mold by spraying generously with cooking oil and be sure to cover the bottom and the sides. Um, so let's go ahead and let's do the gelatin part. Because that, that needs to bloom. And just sprinkle that on the cold water. And what we'll do is we'll we'll start that we'll start that on low when we before we pour our syrup in while it gets ready so it makes gets gets that ready <laughs> started mixing okay so on the stove in a medium pot we're going to combine the sugar that's not a medium pot. <laughs> Combine a medium pot. And I'm going to make sure this fits down in here. Okay, and we do not want, don't want your thermometer to touch the bottom of the pot. Okay? Because if it touches the bottom of the pot, you can break it. We don't want it to touch the bottom of the pot. You can break the thermometer if you let it sit on the bottom of the pan. Don't let it do that. But you want it down in the syrup. Move this up just a dab. Okay, so, so to put our sugar. Our other half a cup of water. Salt. So, I got store it from before. And um, our corn syrup and caramel sauce. Make sure. 
Put it all out of there. So um, now it says to um, cook on medium heat, stirring frequently until the sugar is dissolved. And once dissolved, turn the heat up to high and cook until it reaches 240 degrees. And it says monitor it with a candy thermometer. Uh, turn the mixer on low and pour uh, slowly pour the mixture into the sugar into here. So see how that's that's pumping up. So basically, um, when we get ready to pour this syrup into into our gelatin here, we don't we, um, we don't want to pour it directly into the bowl. We want to let it drizzle down the side like you would for Italian macarons. Medium. It's a medium, right? <laughs> Told you I did this before. Yeah, cook on medium heat, stirring frequently until the sugar is dissolved. And I'm actually going to take my uh, candy thermometer out for now. I don't want to break it while it's drying. Now, once. Once we move it up to high, we won't be stirring it any longer. We're only stirring this until the sugar is dissolved. Once we move it up to high, we don't stir it anymore. So until then, get a picture of what it looks like while I'm And mine's going to have like a, a, a tan tint to it because I have that caramel syrup in there. Alright, so I got those for you. So if you would, let me know in the comments uh, whatever it is that you would like for me to make for you. Um, like I said, I can cook this better than here. And if I don't know how to cook it, I'll figure it out. I'll learn how to make it and cook it for you. My friend Steve, hi Steve. He asked me to make uh, that coleslaw and burgers for you guys, so I did that. I might do uh, sous vide steak. That's super, super easy, and it's probably one of the best steaks I've ever had. And you can cook it straight out of the freezer, you can cook it from frozen. What I do is I get um, the bacon rack wrap filet mignons. They come two to a pack uh, where I get them. I get them at Food Line. They come two to a pack. So I'll take them um, and I'll put my seasonings on them, and then I'll vacuum seal them in a the bag and put them in the freezer. And then when I get ready to have one, I'll do them individually. Then when I get ready to have one, I'll take it out, frozen, and I'll do it CD. Really, really simple. Then uh, once they're done uh, in the CD, I bring them over to the stove and I brown them on each side in my um, small cast iron skillet. Or you can put it put it in the oven, but I don't see any point in starting up the oven. That's something to be because it's so simple. I mean, basically, you just set it and forget it. The timer goes off, you finish it up. And how you finish um, the filet mignon, bacon wrap filet mignon, the candy pot, is you just brown them on each side. Maybe I'll do something like that. Still, um, like a milky white color, got kind of a tan color to it because I have that caramel in it, caramel syrup in it. 
But um, that's why I'm still stirring it. I haven't moved it up yet. So then um, the next step we'll do is um, once this reaches 240 degrees, um, we'll turn on turn the mixer on low and we'll slow, slowly pour, pour it in uh, the sugar mixture and we'll pour it down the side of the bowl. We won't pour it directly into the beaters because it will ruin, um, it'll, it'll ruin it. Not to mention it might splash you and it's very hot. So, we'll see. And then after we do that, then we raise the speed to high and uh, whip it for six minutes. And then we add food coloring if we're going to, and I'm not going to, and the extract, and we uh, whip it for two additional minutes. And then we transfer it to a large piping bag, and um, it says this recipe, this recipe takes, uh, we'll do four bags. So, I'll be able to refill that bag. But what I'll do, I'll do the chocolate, the chocolate covered marshmallows first and put them straight back into the freezer. And then I'll do the little bun. And then they'll just have to sit for four hours. And in four hours I'll check them and see if they're ready to pop out. And if they are, then I'll turn the video back on and we'll go from there. Because the next step after that will be to uh, do them in the sanding sugar. Which is what turns them into the peach or the imitation peeps. Let's just call them imitation peeps. And a lot of people say they don't like peeps until they try homemade marshmallows. A lot of people say they don't like marshmallows until they try homemade marshmallows. I think I would like to make some peppermint marshmallow and some mini marshmallows for chocolate eggs next year, uh, chocolate bombs next year. And somebody was saying to make some uh, Kahlua flavored marshmallows and make coffee bombs. So instead of putting um, hot chocolate in the center, you would put um, coffee. So that sounds like a good idea. Because I, I like chocolate and coffee together. It's like one of my favorite one of my favorite go tos when that's a major depression, and I'm always trying to think, you know, what can make me feel better? So, coffee with hot chocolate mixed into it, oh, yeah, I feel bright as rain. <laughs> Not too long after that. So, it looks like it won't be much longer before I can turn this up. And basically, once it starts uh, cooking, it'll clear. It'll be clear. So that's why I'm still stirring because it's not clear yet. Once the sugar is dissolved, it's clear. It's like when I make hummingbird feed, um, I don't add anything to it. I get straight sugar and water is all I use. And they come to it, they, they don't even care what color it is. They come to it, they see these feeders, they know, they know. Because we feed them as they migrate north and we feed them as they migrate south. But once migratory season is over, you need to remove your feeders. Because um, if you don't remove your feeders, they'll hang around and we don't want them hanging around. We want them to migrate. We want them to move on down the road. We want them to keep going. You don't want them little hummingbirds to freeze it up, do you? So once migratory season's over and you might, you know, maybe you see it. 10, 15, maybe more, depending on where you live, hummingbirds. And then you start noticing that you're only seeing maybe one or two a day, it's time to pull it so they'll just, yeah, move on. Sometimes you gotta force them to go because they're silly. As long as you're feeding them, they'll stay. And if you live in a really cold climate, they don't need to stay, that's why they migrate. So that's good with that caramel on it.
Okay, so at this point, I'm going to stop stirring it. Take a picture right quick. Because I don't think it's going to get any clearer because I put that, that caramel sauce in there. I'm going to put my candy thermometer on here and I'm going to move it up to high. Okay. And remember, you don't want that, you don't want it to, um, you don't want the candy thermometer to sit on the bottom of the pot because it will break. Watch it like the hawk, because it, it moves pretty quick once you move it up to high. It starts going up pretty quick, because it's, it's already up to almost 200 degrees now. And because you're boiling something on the stove that could boil over, you don't want to walk away from it. And it's starting to get clearer now. get to 240 degrees. Which is the softball stage. It's about 200 degrees now. I wish, I wish somebody would invent smell of because this smells so good. It smells so sweet. got to get to the right temperature because if it doesn't get up to the right temperature then it they won't set up you'll just have marshmallow fluff <laughs> if you have that or maybe marshmallow soup we're getting close now I remember uh, when I was a child growing up uh, in Florida, I liked candy making. I would do uh, taffy, saltwater taffy. Oh, that was a favorite of mine. And I always loved to watch it change because it would start out, it would be like this, this ugly seaweed green when you first started pulling it and working with it. It would be really hot too. You had to butter your hands and it didn't help. But you still, that's how you do it. And you would pull it and pull it. Pull it and fold it, pull it and fold it, pull it and fold it, pull it and fold it. And then gradually, little by little, it would it would start to get white and it would get, it would start it would lose its shine and pretty soon you would you would have you have soft water taffy. And it was good. One of my favorites. Of course, it always seems that last little bit of temperature that you need it seems like it takes forever. We're getting there. Now, the last time I made the marshmallows, I did um, Alton Brown's 
uh, marshmallow recipe and I'm, I'm using somebody else's recipe from uh, the marshmallow madness um, I'll get her name and um, so you guys know whose recipe I use and her um, I actually adapted this from her pipe raspberry mallows recipe I can't have raspberries I'm allergic to raspberries so there we have the wrong with um, let's see we've got just a little ways to go and watch it like a hot because same like with broiling it's like one second it just seems like it's taking forever the next thing you're like oh shoot <laughs> uh oh <laughs> I just went over we're almost there And these candy thermometers come with like a little temperature guide and stuff like that. It's a little plastic tube. And uh, when you're finished with your candy thermometer, be sure that you clean it gently under running water. And then put it back in this tube to keep it from breaking when it's in the door. Alright, so we're getting really close. But yeah, the Alvin Brown recipe, that was really good. Um, that's what I used to make the little mini marshmallows with. And uh, the snowflake marshmallows that I cut out with the cookie cutter. Uh, that was really nice. Almost there. Okay, so I think we're up to temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on low.
How yummy that looks. Nice. I'm gonna uh, maybe I'll just set this over here. Get this stuff out of our way. We don't need any of this anymore. So Alright, so now we're gonna put we're gonna get the um, chocolate shells out of this freezer. And we're gonna fill those first and put them back into the freezer. I'm just gonna set that kitty corner like that. Okay. Nice. Let's taste. See that? Pretty. You know what? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. Oh, and it tastes like caramel. Oh my gosh! It's so good. You guys have got to try this. So we're gonna put these in the sink. And that will just rinse right off the hot water. Put this. Get some of this and put it in our. Piping bag. See how ooey gooey that is? This is one messy endeavor, let me tell you. This is one messy, messy endeavor. That is so worth it. chocolate on the top. And remember you got to work fast because you don't want it to melt this chocolate shell because we need to stick it straight back into the freezer. try this recipe because it's really good. I love caramel. Anything. Caramel, chocolate, coconut. I don't care. I love them all. Cons. 
You know I love pecans because I'm southern, right? So you know I love pecans. I, I like pralines. Oh my god. I love pralines so much. And I actually, um, I have a recipe um, that I got from, um, I believe it's the Joy of Cookie. So I'm just like bouncing these a little bit. And a couple of these I could actually put a little more in. Anyway, so I got a recipe from uh, the Joy of Cooking uh, for pralines. Oh, it is amazing. One thing you got you got to learn, you got to remember about the Joy of Cooking then is that you have to read the um, you have to read the recipes carefully and follow them exactly the way they're written. Okay, so let's your picture, your picture. And back in the freezer, everyone. But I'm just going to leave these in the freezer for a while while we do these other ones. And then I will come get them back out and I will put chocolate on top and put them right back into the freezer. And put those like, just like that. Alrighty. So let's fill these bad boys up. How cute are these? I just love these. See how easy that is? I like easy, tasty recipes, and these are definitely easy. And tasty recipes. Kind of sad I broke that egg though. I hope I hope my fix works. Who knows? Who knows if it'll work or not? But no big deal. I have more sugar if it if it doesn't. I didn't get another spoon, did I? <laughs> I thought I had another spoon in here. Get another spoon. I gotta get the big fat one. Alright. So much for working class, right? And of course it's on the bottom. So I'm just gonna leave those like that because <laughs> now they have to be washed. Look at that. I got more chocolate all over. Uh, pick that up there. Maybe I should have used this one the first time. See how spraying that it just slides right off? Cool. Get a small pan out and just put them in a small pan and just make some regular marshmallows. I might, might uh, pipe them in and make uh, mini marshmallows. Easy peasy, huh? as you get lower. You have food, you want to eat your food, Pixie? Eat your food, girl. You're not hungry. I don't need anything for breakfast either. It might be time for me to eat something too. Let's just go ahead and refill this. 
everybody we're back so um my video card got full while i was um putting the marshmallows into the little mold so um i took the opportunity to go ahead and clean up because we only have like one more step to go um for the marshmallow part of it and then uh, we'll finish up the eggs egg <laughs> depending on if my fix works or not um a little bit later i might wait till tomorrow but we'll see so anyway, so once you get them into, pipe them all into the molds, you just kind of tap them on the counter a little bit to get the air bubbles out. Just like cake. The only time you don't tap uh, cakes on the counter to get the air bubbles out is when the recipe tells you not to. But otherwise, just tap it a few times. You look cute though, right? So I consolidated um, my eggs over there so I'd have some room over here to move the, the smock smellers. Alright, so we're going to do the, the last step in the, um, the bunny mold marshmallows with chocolate. I'm going to wipe this off as a spoil. I'm going to come around there and move those a little bit further so I'll have room for the um, chocolate covered bunnies. I'm going to come around to like a sou. So I have room on the counter for my molded candy. Okay. So this is supposed to be ready in four hours. This is going to be a super long video just like the uh, Christmas goodies was. So I'll probably break it up into three different parts like I did that one for you guys. Maybe that over just a little bit. Those are setting up nice. Alright, so let's get out these. I'll put this over here because I'm going to put I'm gonna put the chocolate on there when it's done. We just have one more step for those. So let's get them out. Cool. So our last step for these is to seal our marshmallow molded candies with chocolate. Yeah, they're setting up nice. So that's the last step we're going to do is, um, I might need to melt some more chocolate, but we'll find out. If we do, I'll pause the video. I'm just going to put a little chocolate in there. And again, you gotta work fast. We're just sealing the marshmallows. And at this point, our caramel flavored marshmallows. You know me, I'm over here making a mess. <laughs> but you know, it cleans up. Yeah, baby, it cleans up.
But I think I was talking about um, wanting to make some pralines. I think I, I think I made some praline patties. Those are nice. Those taste really good. They're a nice little treat too. I'm trying to think of another special candy I've made that I really liked. Oh, of course, I made granola bars. That's my hurricane prop. Granola bars. That's what I made for um, my kids when they were little. Uh, a lot of stuff I didn't let them have. My kids didn't even know what the ice cream man was until my oldest was six years old. As far as I knew, I didn't know what that sound was. So I didn't want them having all that junk. They got homemade, homemade bread, homemade granola bars, homemade fruit roll-ups, and I just got um, some Pampered Chef um, fruit roll-up trays for my air fryer that I can't wait to use because I love fruit roll-ups. I'll make them for my grandson see how he likes them. I would like to get a um, Excalibur 9 tray adjustable temperature dehydrator. I've always wanted one. I like to dehydrate stuff. I think you know, it's really good to have when you're in, a, in an area that's prone to storms. You know, whether it's winter storms or hurricanes or something like that. So that if you don't have power for a while, you have you have some some food that you can eat. Let's see, put that in there. And I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in the freezer. I'm thinking about making some. Uh, Croissants from a puff pastry. <laughs> yeah, the store bought kind. Shame on me, right? Hey, fastest and easiest way to do something. That's my motto. It just sounds like a good idea. And if I don't have to spend, you know, five or ten bucks on store bought croissants. And I can make them at home a lot cheaper and it'd be more fun to make them, right? I'm not sure, but I like making my own stuff. I just feel better about what I'm eating when I know what's in it. I might have just enough. Just enough. Don't know. We'll find out soon, I guess. So I'm basically just pushing the chocolate to the edge of the um, shell that I made originally before I put the marshmallows in there. And it does not look like they were warm enough to melt the chocolate because I took, that's why I left it in the freezer. Because I thought maybe, just maybe, if I leave them in the freezer until time to pipe in the marshmallow, it won't melt the chocolate shell. And it doesn't look like it did. So, that's nice. That idea worked out good. Or well, as Joshua would say. doing stuff like this because it gives me a, a sense of accomplishment and I like sharing it with you guys too. So I know there's a lot of people out there like me that are just like yearning to learn stuff. And if you can eat it or drink it, all the better, right? 
I'll show you guys how to make um, how to make Kahlua and um, some honey mead maybe. Coconut rum. Coconut rum is really good. Okay, everybody, cross your fingers. I hope I got enough left in here. Let's <laughs> do these last. Whoops. Last few. There sure ain't much in here. But there's gonna be enough. Now, cross your fingers. Have some faith. <laughs> it's Palm Sunday. Have some faith. I'm gonna fill that one a little too full with marshmallow. But that's okay. We still eat the ugly ones, right? We we'll still eat the ugly ones. Oh, I think I'm gonna get so, so lucky. So lucky. I'm gonna look at that last full spoonful. That's actually more than I need. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's time to unplug this bad boy and move it to the off position. So it's in the off position when I plug it back in the next time. Those things come in handy, I tell you. So much easier than staying at the stove with, you know, two pots or two pans and or a double boiler. I don't even think I've ever used a double boiler. My granny used to use them all the time. But this one got too much chocolate. In it. Whoopsie. What did I just tell you? We still eat the ugly ones. We still eat the ugly ones. We don't care. And actually, we like the ugly ones. We can't give the ugly ones away, so we get to eat them, right? So what I have to do, it films in AVI, and um, the video program that I use to make my videos for you with will only accept um, movie format, so I have to upload it to YouTube and then download it back in the correct format and then put it all together in um, a motion con, I'll give you guys a link, um, is what I use because I can't figure out how to make my camera uh, film in the correct format, so I don't have to do all that. But anyway, so I have everything up until this part right here uploading to YouTube right now, and I'll re-download them. So while we're waiting on this, because it takes four hours for these to set up before we could do the next step, and then um, I'm going to wait. Um, I'm going to wait ten minutes for the chocolate. Then I'll come back and I'll, we'll take, we'll pop the chocolate out onto here so we can see what they look like. So I will be back shortly. 